In this tutorial, we are going to look at histograms. Uh, and there is one absolutely key point about histograms that will allow you to do all histogram questions. And that is that the frequency on a histogram is given by the area. Okay, uh, so that means that for any particular block, let's look at the second one on my diagram there. Okay, the frequency would be found by multiplying the frequency density. Notice that that is what is put on the vertical axis, not frequency, but frequency density. We will need a scale, obviously, but we haven't got that yet. Anyway, the frequency is found by multiplying the frequency density by the width of the rectangle, which is the class width. So there it is, frequency density times class width. Now, um, how does that help in all situations? Well, if I put that in a blue triangle, frequency is frequency density times class width. I can rearrange that very quickly to give me frequency density is frequency divided by class width. And if you're wondering what frequency density is, that's what it is. Okay, so we can also rearrange it, obviously, to give class width is frequency over frequency density, but that's less commonly needed. One thing we might have to do, and usually have to do, is actually put a scale on the frequency density axis, which we need to work out from something we're given. And if I were you, I would always add extra columns to the table. The original table usually looks like this. It's a frequency table. And then I've added these blue columns here for the class width and the frequency density. So let's have a look at our question. We are given an incomplete histogram and table. There's the histogram, only three blocks on it. There's the table. There are six classes, but only four of them have numbers. So both things are incomplete. And we are asked to use the table to complete the histogram and use the histogram to complete the table. Okay, so hopefully one of the blocks refers to one of the classes with a frequency, and it does. This block here, the little thin one, refers to this class here, 10 to 15 with a frequency of 60. Right, let's use my extra columns. We're going to need to know the class width for each of the uh, classes, and we're going to need to know at some point the frequency density. Class width, width, widths are easy. 0 to 10 is just 10. 10 to 15, well, we just do 15 minus 10 and get 5. 15 to 30. 30 minus 15 is 15, 50 minus 30 is 20, 75 minus 50 is 25, and 80 minus 75 is 5. So lots of different class widths, lots of rectangles of different widths will be on the graph. Now, in order to get our scale, we use the highlighted block and class, and we calculate its frequency density. Now, earlier we saw that frequency density was frequency over class width. So let's just write that down. Frequency density is frequency over class width. And so we're going to divide the 60 by the 5 to get, well, 60 divided by 5 is 12. And that tells me the height of this block here. So if that's 12, we can now put our scale in. Okay, and a quick scan of this tells me that every five little squares is two, and so we can put our scale in like this. You might need to look at that a little more carefully, but it does work. So every five squares is two, and so there is an appropriate scale on the frequency density axis. And we will just check again uh, that we've done the right thing. Looking at that first block, its height there is 12, and its width there is 5, and 12 times 5 is the 60, which is the frequency. So, worth checking, but we are right. Okay, now we're going to use the table to complete the histogram. So what we're going to do, I'm just going to change colour, is we're going to use the frequencies we've got to find the frequency densities for the missing blocks. So the first one, 100 divided by 10, is 10. So let's put that block on the diagram. So it's going to be 10 high. There it is. Okay, there's the height of it. And I should probably put in the sides as well, uh, like that. No need to shade it in, but there is the first block. Okay, width 10, height 10, frequency 100. And then for the last two blocks, 
Uh, if I do 50 divided by 25, I get 2. So from 50 to 75 is 2 high. So there's the right-hand side of the block. And there's the height of the block. Okay, there's the top of the block. It's 2 high and 25 wide. And then the last one, 20 divided by 5 is going to be 4 high. So using the scale on the vertical axis there, okay, I get uh, 4, which is 1, 2, 3, 4, there, okay, and it's only 5 wide, so it goes from 75 to 80. So I've completed the histogram. And now I'm going to use the histogram to complete the table, uh, and this time I'm going to write down the frequency densities, I'll just change colour again. Um, so for the two blocks we haven't looked at yet, uh, which are um, this one and this one, the two I've marked with X's, um, we can just read off the heights there, okay? And the heights are the frequency densities. So for that first block, the height is 8. Now, how do I find the frequency? Well, going back to my original point that frequency is area, it's frequency times class width, isn't it? So we're going to multiply those two together to get uh, our frequency. And 15 times 8 is 120. And then we do the same thing for this block, the one with the X in it now. If we look at that carefully, we see that the height is 5. It's halfway between 4 and 6, so that's the frequency density. And we multiply 5 by 20 to get 100. And so we have completed the table as well. And if you um, look at this, you should see there are two with 100 on it. That first block there, which I've just shaded in, and that last block we were just dealing with, although they're different shapes, have the same area. Okay, so they visually look the same, and that's the point of a histogram, is that frequency is area. Don't forget it.